Little on this airplane last year for my video magazine, and he told me some things that I found a little hard to believe. So I thought maybe I'd get a hold of an owner and yeah. a builder, and yeah. maybe get the, the straight facts. Yeah. You build this airplane? Uh, with team's help on this serial number one, yes. Now, Harold was telling me that the fuselage was made out of petrified wood. No, I think it's some fine Canadian lumber. The airframe is... Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. The fuselage... You're getting as bad as Harold no, here. I'm getting as bad as Harold, but uh, uh, no, the, the fuselage is a nice 4130 chrome molly steel fuselage. And the wing is actually a, a wood wing then? Yes. Okay. Now, you got the kit from Team or... Did yes. Okay. Built it at the... Mo we did most of the building at the factory with Team's help to expedite the building progress process and get one up in the air and going and so you know so we could demo one too. Now I saw this flying at uh, Lakeland I think with the 277. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh you saw it flying with the 277 and you saw it with the, the uh, small Zenoa engine. Small Zenoa engine. Yes. Right. Now I noticed you've got a the twin Ro cylinder Rotax on this side. The Rotax 447 yes. Okay. Now how much do you weigh in at? 225, okay. unfortunately. <laughs> but it's nice to see that the plane can fly very, very well with a you know, big sized man in it, with all of the options, with baggage, a ballistic chute, and fly very comfortably long, you know, 60 some miles an hour without straining the engine. Now, that was one of the reasons that uh, I'm actually interviewing you. I noticed on a sign uh, yesterday, you flew this airplane from where? Uh, from southern Indiana, from Bloomfield, Indiana, where my home is. Uh, you know, down here. Flew uh, Thursday afternoon, Friday afternoon, and came in on Saturday. About a 14, hour, 14 and a half hours total flying time. Uh, what kind of speed would you have been cruising at? Uh, I was always had a ground speed of better than 60 miles an hour. I blocked 60 miles an hour, and that includes climb outs and slow descents yep. to land and all that. What kind of fuel do you have on board? Uh, 12 and a half uh, gallons of fuel, which gives me a cruise range of about four hours when I'm cruising along nice and moderately. Uh, a healthy three hours plus if I'm cruising along, you know, briskly if I'm in a big hurry. What kind of a climb rate would it have now uh, with this engine and your weight in there? Probably. I have the prop at the moment adjusted for with 12 degrees of pitch. It's a ground adjustable warp drive prop, and probably with my weight, with baggage, full fuel, probably only about 600 feet per minute. Okay. Lightly loaded and easy 800. I mean, with still with a with a pilot on it, but without excess fuel and without you know heavy baggage behind the seat, probably closer to 800 feet per minute. Now Indiana is up sort of north up in where I am from Ontario. It gets fairly cold up there. Are you mm -hmm. uh, comfortable flying this thing out in the cold like this? Oh yeah, I've had it out flying at 28 degree temperatures uh, for like an hour at a time. Uh, wear insulated pants and a, uh, uh, a kind of a fluffy sweater with an insulated jacket and uh, nice gloves. Um, this, the windshield offers good protection from the wind blast. You, you still get air movement, so there's a wind chill factor. But you, you know, you wear uh, you know your uh, uh, helmet and goggles and it's comfortable. It's, it's not to go out and fly uh, for eight hours at 32 degrees, but you can go out, you know, in and I did, lots in January and fly at freezing or below if you dress a little bit like a snowmobiler. Now, the aircraft itself, did you build it at the factory or build it at uh, your... Yes, at, at the factory with help from uh, Larry and uh, Harold and some of the other people there at team. How many hours would you feel that it took you to build it? To do a, you know, to do first, a meticulous first of all, how does, how does the airframe, how does the kit come to me, first of all? Okay, the everything is already welded. The, you know, the uh, fuselage is a nice welded from Molly Steel unit. You do have to, uh, you, you inspect the fuselage, you clean you clean the steel, you primer it with like a bare prime kind of primer, and you give it an epoxy paint job. You know, uh, after uh, fabric covering a couple of small places, which just takes just a matter of minutes. You know, uh, and the uh, the of course the struts are you know already uh, aluminum tubes. Team offers the option of pre-cut and pre-drilled uh, hardware uh, for all the bracketry and everything. Uh, the the uh, wing uh, is is wood uh, with a wooden you know wooden front and aft strut. Uh, spar that is with the with the wooden ribs on approximately 12 and a half inch center something like that uh, but team offers a team has at the factory a nice spar jig to build the spars very quickly and easily and precisely and they have rib jigs where you can build a rib in about 20 minutes there's not that many ribs in it and uh, they, they also offer a pre-built rib and spar option for their customers that seems to be very very popular that cuts the wing building time down probably to under 100 hours. What would the base price of this kit come in at then? Uh, $5,995 with the smallest engine, with the 22 horses and no engine. 
I'll round off to $6,600 with the Rotax 277 28 horsepower engine and $7,000, $6,995 with the 40 horsepower Rotax 447 engine that this plane has. Now there are additional options that a lot of pilots want. If you're not worried about keeping the weight down, if you're going to be registering the plane, you know, they have brakes that add a few pounds and I don't know the price, no, they're not terribly expensive. Wheel pants, droop wing tips, I've added two five gallon wing fuel tanks, those, those are $99 each, and a few other small options. Uh, the instrumentation and the warp drive prop and the, and the ballistic parachute I added myself, you know, after the plane was up and flying.